Hey everybody, what's going on? My name is PBM or Polar Bear Mike. Today I'm going to be doing an updated version of my support god build. I did one of these a couple months ago back towards the start of season 4 in the early spring, but obviously a lot of changes have happened with the most recent ones being that the aura items, Thebes, and Sovereignty have gotten pretty significant nerfs. Uh, I know I see a lot of people posting on Reddit or tweeting at me or, you know, just talking about what the new support build should be or they don't know what to build so hopefully uh this build will serve as a good tool to give you guys some insight on how i think or what i think is the best build keep in mind i'm just one person and i have a specific way that i kind of think about the game and a specific way i like to play and uh what i think is best so not everybody will agree with me and i won't agree with everybody else so i'll just give you my perspective give you some reasoning behind it and take you into uh, I'll show you like some of the math I have behind it if you're wondering how big of an impact the aura is actually made and the changes made math wise I can have or I can show you guys some pretty good representations of that through numbers. So anyways It's gonna be a long video. Obviously, I don't know if I can really timestamp it that well I'll try for you guys, but for the most part It's gonna be a long video and if you listen to all of it, hopefully you'll get a lot of information out of it I'll try to put uh, as much insight into it as I can and yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. All right, so first off, before I talk about the specific changes, let's go through kind of the evolution, if you will, or how support builds have evolved during season four. And we'll talk about uh, how much these changes really impacted. So towards the start of season four, we have obviously Watcher is gonna be auto built every single game. Then you go into your boots. You can pick any boots option, but we'll use Travelers here because it doesn't add any extra defense so it makes the numbers nice and clean for us to compare the actual other items anyways at the start of season four you basically got to this point and then you decided if you were going to go mark of the vanguard or not i think in most games it was a good idea to go mark of the vanguard the item had 150 health and the passive was five instead of four and it was a much better item and then you would go into your standard you know the gauntlet of thebes was introduced you used to have 400 health and 20 of each prots you would go into that then you would go into sovereignty and then you would go into heart ward and then these other slots didn't matter maybe you go like a spirit robe and you go like a wing blade or a magi's or a mantle or whatever else you decided to build really didn't matter but this was like the standard cookie cutter support build and for the most part in the past prior to this in season four you weren't really seeing that many standard cookie cutter builds obviously if you were at a lower level uh or if you just like barely play support maybe you only play it when you get forced to in ranked you would really only go the same build but if you're a support player who truly understands the role and you understand uh how to counter build and how to set up stuff you'd always be looking at options like pestilence like magi's like wing blade stuff you know so on and so forth maybe even like genji's guard back in season three or nemean or breastplate blah 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 there are a lot more uh diversity in builds and you really would only see maybe sovereignty into heart ward in season three but with the addition of gauntlet of thebes your aura items went from giving just 30 physical and just 20 magical back in season three to now you're bumping that up with another item thebes and you're getting 50 on the physical prot aura and 40 on the magical aura and those increases just made it so insane for not only your teammates to have those type of prots but also for you as a support to get a 400 health item like gauntlet of thebes that also helped your team like that and to have mark of the vanguard be overtuned and to have all of these items be cheap it puts support builds into a spot where there was really no reason not to go the stuff the math back backed it up it helped all of your carries it was good effective health for yourself and it had good power spikes and it was cheap so it was just the best way to build by far so in response to that, high res nerfed Mark of the Vanguard because it was a problem in solo lane as well. They also kicked Gauntlet of Thebes down to 350 health. And then instead of nerfing Heart Ward, what they did is they actually buffed other auras. So they buffed other items such as uh, Shogun Skisari. That aura went from 15% to 25% on the attack speed. I believe they may be... I forget what else they buffed. I believe they buffed uh, Stone of Gaia a little bit. They changed around Shield of Regrowth from... 200 to 300 health and from 10 or from 20 percent cdr to 10 percent cdr so they made some other slight adjustments there 
And then with the and they also introduce Lono's Mask. So then your build, this would be early summer split. Uh, yeah, pretty much early summer split. Maybe between splits, your build became Watcher's Gift, Lono's Mask into Boots. We'll use Traveler's Shoes again, and then you would still go Gauntlet of Thebes, and then you would still go Sovereignty. So you wouldn't have the Mark of the Vanguard that got replaced by Lono's. So now your power is spiking a lot quicker. You're using 300 less gold, and you're generating gold off the of Lono's. So this power spike is a big improvement to Vanguard, in my opinion. You're a little less tanky, but not a big deal. And then for the Magical Aura, people were opting to go Shogun's here. And what that would do is give you a little bit more selfishness early in the build, and then, you know, you could go the Spirit Robe after. But what this would do is if you keep the same build curve, you're building a lot more quickly because you get the extra gold from Lono's. And you're also gaining more selfish stats earlier. So through these five items, you have double the CDR from 10 to 20 between these two. And you have max crowd control reduction with outgoing reinforced shoes. So you slowly kind of got a little more utility stats and you weren't really doing the same cookie cutter stuff. This build was also allowing you to go... Uh, things like Spirit Robe a little bit earlier. If you wanted, you could go Spirit Robe here. If they didn't have much magical damage, said they say they have like a utility mid mage, uh, you could still go Pestilence. You could still go Void Stone. Blah blah blah. But for the most part, you're still doing the same thing. You're just going Boots, Thebes, Sovereignty every single game. Same stuff. So now recently, what High Res has done is they haven't really. I, I don't know what their exact logic behind it is, but auras have been dominated. And specifically, as you can see, the two auras that were dominating were Thebes and Sovereignty. So they nerfed both of them. They took Thebes from 350 health and 20 on each aura to 300 health and 15 on each aura. And then for Sovereignty, it was 30 props. It's now 40. The aura was 30. It's now 15. So only a net loss of 5 prop for yourself. But for your team, 15 on the aura is what really matters. Because if you're hitting you know, three other teammates, you just lost 45 props on that nerf collectively between the three of those teammates. So, now people get in the spot where they really don't know what you do now. You still go Watchers. You probably still go, or not probably, you, you still go Lonos. If you can afford to go Lonos and you're not worried about it, you go it. You should be going Lonos, by the way. Uh, and then you go Boots. And now people don't really know what to do. Are you going to go Hide of the Urchin, or no is, you know, are Thebes and Sovereignty still good? Do I still build these here? Do I look at other items? Do I just start going really selfish? Do I get, you know, do I go like a Spirit Robe right after my boots? Do I get, you know, Heartward, blah, blah, blah. How do I build? So, this is kind of the dilemma that you hit, and now you're put into this weird spot where at the start of the season, they introduced a lot of new items. They introduced... Things such as Jade Emperor's Crown, and they changed healing, where they changed, you know, the way Celestial Legion Helm works, so maybe healers could be more viable, blah, blah, blah. Uh, they changed, they added in, where is it? Uh, they added in Stone of Gaia to counter build and Shield of Regrowth as selfish options, yes, but they also added in, where the hell is Stone of Binding? There we go, Stone of Binding. They added in Stone of Binding. And these items weren't really getting touched with Stone of Binding, they also buffed Void Stone. Uh, Jade Emperor's Crown is another aggressive type aura. Shogun's is an aggressive aura. They changed it on Ani Hunter's garb. So there are a lot of these items here, uh, with the exception of Shogun's, because that's been built a lot. But these items are fairly new in Season 4, and they really haven't been built as much. And when I first saw the changes, I was looking, you know, maybe you go this type of aggressive support build. Maybe you go something like, you know, maybe you go... A Watcher's Gift, and you go your Lonos, and you go Boots, but maybe instead of getting one of these two options, maybe you spend a little bit extra gold, and say you go really extreme, and you get, like, Pen Boots, and then maybe you go into, uh, like, a Jade Emperor's Crown, and then you start getting a Void Stone, and then you just start chunking the hell out of people. You do a ton of damage. And that is an option that you can do. I still think that while this can be good, and it can dominate... Uh, lower tier games like if I'm playing Ares in a rank game and I go this build you bet your ass I'm gonna farm people with this like it, it will just chunk everybody and you're gonna be and you're gonna feel pretty tanky because you have you know auras you still have a lot of good defense between these items so that is a route you can go the nice thing about support builds is that even though everyone's freaking out about not having the same type of build every game and not having a good build every game like the Thebes Sovereignty Heartward type style all these items are really cheap, and if you just pay attention to 
what situation you're in and watch the comps then you can really have a good build no matter what so with that being said i'll show you guys just how much the auras were affected and then i'll talk about these other items in a little bit more detail and then you'll be able to see uh, how you really value them and if you do want to go away from aura builds and what else might be a good option out there like hide of the urchin rushes so on all right so to try to get a better understanding of how much the aura nerfs to thebes and sovereignty actually did and how much of an impact it made you can kind of look at numbers to keep uh or to take kind of a grain of salt with us or whatever you shouldn't go strictly by numbers because a lot of building in smite is situational and also a lot of it goes by feel and by power spike for example if the best item in the game like statistically when you finish it was like 2500 gold but you needed like you couldn't buy any tier one or tier two of it you had to save 2500 gold to buy it it would be a shit item right because you would get horrible power spikes and you wouldn't transition into that item very good so a lot of what matters are the power spikes of the tier one of the tier and the tier two of the items and you know how quick you can finish it compared to other items and blah 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 so you don't want to strictly go by numbers so i'll, I'll say that at the start before we go into all the numbers which is the classic thing to do so first off is this little damage taken versus armor chart this really isn't saying too much this is just if you already understand how prot works you'll know what this is so say I'm getting hit by a 100 damage auto attack. If I have zero armor, I take all 100 damage, right? Or if they have a ton of pen, I'm taking true damage at this point. This is 100 damage. It's as if I have no defense. Then if I have five defense, it goes down. If I have 10, it goes down. If I have 15, it keeps going down and down and down. But what you'll see is along this curve, it doesn't actually ever go to zero. And what this means is as you reach the armor cap, which is 325, you're never actually gonna hit zero damage taken. You're always gonna be taking damage. You can't mitigate 100% of damage. The reason that's important is because if it's an exponential curve, I think that's what it's called. I don't fucking know. I haven't taken a math class in forever. But anyways, like if the curve is is going like this, that means that the earlier you have defense, the bigger impact it makes, right? So let's say my carries have 30 prop and I'm giving them the old sovereignty aura. So I'm going, I'm taking them from 30 to 60 because I'm giving them 30 props from soft. Their damage went from about 77 to 62. So I'm mitigating about 15% damage, a little bit less. But if they had 60 procs and I'm taking them to 90, so the same 30, uh, the same 30 pro increase, I'm going from 62 to 52. So I'm only mitigating about 10% of the total damage. So as I go on and on, if they're building more prot and then I'm giving them the extra aura, the amount of damage mitigation that the aura is giving them is decreased, if that makes sense. It doesn't. It's not too big of a deal because you're still mitigating extra damage, right? Like, you're not going to just stop building procs as a support or a soul laner because you're mitigating less. The point is to always mitigate as much as you can. But when the items get nerfed, you want to kind of revisit stuff like this to see how much of an impact it's actually making. So I did these little charts and, like, collected a bunch of numbers back in, like, Season 4 Spring, like, way early on, like, around the PTS and stuff. And what I wanted to see is back then, every single mage player was pretty much going Helm in all their builds. They were, like, rushing Helm, like, first two items every single game. That isn't so much the case anymore. So you can substitute in all these, like, charts and things I'm about to show you. You can substitute Mage for Carry, and you can substitute Helm for, like, any additional defense item. This would work with Junglers building Shifter Shield, or even when we had the ADC meta where people were building Shifter Shield. So, basically all this means is... If my carry is building additional defense and I'm giving them auras, how much prot will they have? And then how much damage mitigation is that prot giving them? So here would be the base defense that they have plus Thebes plus Sovereignty. So Thebes and Sovereignty, this is old Thebes and Sovereignty. We're giving a total of 50 prots before. And as you can see, you just go down and down and you get close to, you know, 115 prots as you hit level 20. Something to note here is also that carries have physical defense scaling per level but they don't have magical as you can see right here like all these charts are just completely you know static they don't really have scaling magical pro it's about 30 on average for mages i just went through with like the entire mage tab and just added them up and divide by the number of mages super simple math but it's all static because they don't have physical defense scaling whereas or because they don't have magical defense scaling but they do have physical defense scaling so what you want to see is when you're finishing your aura 
and based on what level both of you are, how much are you giving them compared to later in the game, and blah blah blah. So as you can see, obviously, like, these are the new charts, and the magical one doesn't change really much at all. If you go Heartward and Thebes, you're only losing 5 magical prot. You went from 40 total between those two down to 35 total. But Thebes and Sovereignty together used to give you 50 total physical prot, and they're now only giving you 30. So you're going down 20, whereas Magical is going down 5, so it's a huge difference. So here you can see like all the basic numbers. This doesn't really matter. The application of it is down below. I don't want to scroll over too far. Whoopsie. Uh, the application is down below, which is right here. So again, substitute mages for just carries in general, and helm can be any defense item. It doesn't really matter. So this would be how much damage mitigation you're giving them. So this chart is the one that actually matters if I don't drag stuff out of place like an idiot. This chart right here is the one that matters, and the reason this middle one is the one that matters is because this is what would represent how much your auras are providing to a carry that isn't building additional defense at the time that you're giving them the aura. So uh, the average physical prods on mage at level 9 or 34. Level 9, when you're both level 9, is about the time you can finish your first aura item if you're rushing it. Again, these numbers were off of early in Season 4 Spring. This may be a little different with like Lono's mask power spikes and stuff like that, and how much gold you're getting, how much the meta has changed and farm, blah blah blah. But anyways, it's about this earlier in the game. You can change these numbers by a little bit. It doesn't really make too big a different, a too big a difference if I can speak English. There you go. So if you were taking them from 34 props at the average, and you're giving them sob passive, you're going from 25.4% mitigation to 39% based on, you know, however much damage you were taking. I used 100 for all of this just to have like a static number. Doesn't matter. So sob would be 13.6%. Thebes was 20 prot, so it's a little bit less, 9.6%. And then both together, when you add them together, it's not going to be just this number plus that number. It'll be 50 prots, which was 20.2% damage mitigation. So to put that in perspective, something like shell right used to be auto pick up every single game first relic season three it was incredibly broken it was like 45 prots and 10 percent damage mitigation i believe now it's been nerfed and it's 30 prots and five percent damage mitigation without upgrading the relic so if you don't upgrade the relic you're getting 30 prots from it which is the same as sov and then you're getting a bonus five percent damage mitigation which puts us to 18.6 percent which is less than what both Sov and Thebes were giving. So, a relic that had a two and a half minute cooldown and only lasted for five seconds when you popped it was giving less damage mitigation than building both Sovereignty and Thebes together, and they had 100% uptime if you were near your carries. So, the auras were completely fucking broken, which is why they changed them, obviously. So, if you take that to the new numbers, right? And you go over here, these are the new calculations, same chart, you just want to look at the middle one, this is the most important one. If you're interested in all the other shit, then you can decipher it yourself, all the information is here. But, if you look at the new one, the first thing you'll notice is one, both Sovereignty and Thebes are the same, because they each give 15 physical prots now. And you also notice that together they give what Old Sov was giving by itself. So obviously the effectiveness of these auras has gone down. They're still giving you bonus damage mitigation, which is good, but if they're so decreased, and for yourself personally, they're a little bit less tanky, then you really have to start valuing, well, when do I care about other passives more than this? When would I rather just be a selfish, uh, be like a little bit more selfish and maybe build a little bit more CDR or go for other stats or be able to like build something like a Midgardian male or an Emperor's armor, blah, 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 who cares? At the, or Jade Emperor's Crown, pretty much anything. When when do you reach that threshold? And for me, it's hard to tell just by the numbers because there's so many things that you have to keep in account. Like one, do your mages or do your carries build props? And then there's also like, this is the best these auras are ever going to get. This chart right here is like the prime time for these auras. Like this little both uh, da bonus damage mitigation when you have these, like, you're not going to have both auras done when your mage is level 9. So this isn't even, like, that realistic of a scenario. The point is more that this number, it, these numbers are only going to go down. Because as the game continues, those mages and those carries are going to build uh, 
or they're going to stack up more physical props just from leveling up. So these numbers will go down a little bit. If they build any extra defense, they go down more. So the effectiveness, while you're still mitigating extra damage for them, the effectiveness goes down. So in my opinion, you get to the point where I'm looking at this and I feel like I don't really feel all that tanky when I rush Sovereignty anymore. Like, I feel more tanky if I go something like a Height of the Urchin, which many people have suggested as kind of the new build path to go. Or people have suggested going, like, maybe you just go CDR and you go, like, Breastplate of Valor and you get Wing Blades and you get stuff like that and you become more of a Bruiser-style role. In my opinion, uh, I wasn't really sure. All I knew is that I would still rather have Thebes and Sovereignty because if I'm building these items... It's not for selfish reasons. If I'm building selfishly, I would just go Urchin every game. But I don't really like Urchin because I value passives on items. And if I still value the Aura passive, then why would I ever go Sav over Thebes when Thebes is giving both magical and physical protection? So, what I did is I had my good pal and teammate Chaos run some item permutations, which are somewhere over here. Okay, I have to scroll up. Whoops. Alright, here they are. So, basically, what these are is looking at item combos for effective health so these are the most effective health items that you can get for their slot so when it says fizz no edit this basically just means physical effective health these are the best items in the game individually on their own mid guardians the best then magi's blessing is second and then emperor's armor then thebes then sovereignty so in terms of effective health these are the five best effective health items in the game for physical defense if you um can only build one of them basically and something you'll notice throughout here is that magi's blessing it and as you go on you guys can look at this if you're yourself if you really understand like what it means but what you'll notice is uh these are like two item combos three item combos four item combos so on and so forth but magi's blessing keeps popping up in like all of these it's a constant through all of this and the reason for that is that in terms of effective health magi is giving you 350 and then giving you 15 of each prot. The second you finish it, it gives you a ton of bonus uh, EHP against pretty much everyone who doesn't have pen. But once you start getting pen involved, then these numbers change a little bit. But the point is, you want to look at this to find like a base for your build. In the past, it was always Thebes, right? Because it gave you just flat health. You didn't care if you were taking physical or magical damage. You were just, you know, ha being, like, really tanky because you had a ton of health. And then you could build into the Sovereignty and the Heart Ward and the other items that you needed. So, now you want to look for a new base. Like, maybe you could look at Magi's Blessing, or you could rush Midgardian Mail, or you could go Emperor's Armor. Thebes still pops up here. It's fourth for physical and third for magical. So, if you don't think you're at risk of dying, you can still do a Thebes rush and you're fine. You can do these other little item combos, like... You can go Thebes, and then you can get Emperors or Midgardian, and then get Pestilence or Magi's or get Heart Ward or whatever else. The point is, if you look at all these stupid charts, and you look at, like, all this information that is, like, just all these item combos and stuff like that, you'll notice that the auras still pop up, and that there's still good effective health, and that if you combine them with other items, that their value just keeps increasing and increasing. And what I really care about when I build is not just my own stats i care about the passives on item items and you'll notice that items like urchin here they don't really pop up that often they're coming in when there's like four item combos so basically when you're full build and they're coming up you know towards the bottom of the uh three item combos and they pretty much they don't really show up at all in the two item or the one item combos they show up last and magical for the you know two item combos and they show up last and magical for the one item combos so basically Urchin really isn't that much effective health, and it also has horrible power spikes because it's more expensive than other items, and the tier 1 cloak is, like, one of the worst items in the game. While the tier 2 is good and the tier 3 is obviously the full Urchin, it's still not quite the same. So I'll go into God Builder, and you can take a look at how I think the full build should kind of look. Alright, so, if we're looking for how to build now, and we don't value Hide of the Urchin, which I personally don't, because I don't think that the power spike is good, as I mentioned, and I don't really think that I value just raw stats over having good passives on items, stuff like Shogun's, or having CDR from Breastplate, or, you know, having the Midgardian male passive, all of that stuff. If I personally don't value that as much, what else can I look towards? What is kind of 
the thing that I can go in my builds to start my builds that will make me tanky. And I can pretty much rely on having it be good every game. So, first off, you should be able to counter build, for one. So, you want to set yourself up in a position where if they have you know, four auto attackers, you can build a Midgardian male or a Hide of the Nemean Lion and not feel like you're squishy for it. You want to set yourself up so that if they have a three magical comp, you can just go Heartward Amulet right away. If they have, you know, a lot of CC, you can get Spirit Robe early in your build. You want to be able to have options as you progress through your builds. The reason that Thebes was so good before is that if you were building normally and you were just going Watchers and you were going Lonos and then Travelers, you build Thebes right here. Or, not Stone Guy, you build Thebes, and then you can transition into anything, because you have a lot of health. You don't get punished for going a Breastplate of Valor right away. This is actually something that I did in my SPL game. I was playing Amaterasu versus Space Station, the game we won. And I just went Gauntlet of Thebes, and then I went Breastplate, because I just needed physical date, and I wanted the CDR. And then, you know, they had a lot of CC, so I went into Spirit Robe, and I went into Shogun's Kasari after that. And then all of a sudden, I have max CDR through these items... I'm still giving my teammates an aura from Thebes, I'm still giving them the Shogun's aura, and I'm still giving them my Amaterasu, like, passive auras from my one, and from my actual passive where I shred prots. So, all of this together, you want to create options. So, the Thebes rush, in my opinion, is still good. I did it in an SPL game, I saw other people still doing it from the support role. I think that's still a completely viable build. You can look towards this pretty much every game. How you fill out the rest of this doesn't matter that much. Like I said, if... You know, they have a lot of physical auto-attackers, you can go a mid-guardian mail. They have, you know, a lot of magical damage that you're worried about, just throwing a heart ward, no problem. This is still an insanely good aura item. You could go spirit robe here, if they have a lot of CC. You could still go urchin here, if you want. If you value urchin, which I personally don't, it's still very good right here. You're getting a lot of selfish stats, you can kind of scale throughout the game with the passive, and you still have Thebes, you could even reverse this order. You could go... Uh, I think Mealzy is a big fan of this, but you could go Jade Emperor's Crown. I even saw him rush this item after Boots in a couple of his game, uh, in a couple of his SPL games. This is something that I also tried in scrims, and maybe it was just because of the gods I was playing. It didn't feel as good, but if you can make use of that 20 extra power in the early game, then this item is really good. Reducing physical power by 30, you can basically cut an ADC or a jungler's power basically in half, or like a soul laner would be a better example. Soul laners normally only really build power boots as their damage for a majority of the game. And you're basically taking away a huge portion of their boots uh, damage so that they can't dive your carries as effectively. And it's also a pretty good selfish option for yourself. So you could think of it like the aggressive counterpart to Sovereignty. Of course, you could still go Sov here. Personally, I don't value this as much. I think if you look at other physical defense items, uh, the Jade Emperor's Crown... You look at Breastplate of Valor and Hide of the Nemean Lion, as well as Midgardian Mail and Emperor's Armor. In my opinion, I think that these items can bring more to your build and can bring more to kind of team utility in the case of Emperor's Armor and Midgardian Mail than a Sovereignty could. Because if you just rush this build, the Thebes and the Sov, in my opinion, it feels really squishy. And I feel that these auras aren't really bringing that much, especially if you go with Shell. If you're starting the game with a shell, then if you're just stacking all these props, it's still pretty good, but you're really not giving your team that much additional because of what we talked about earlier with how the numbers work. So, again, you have a lot of options. In my personal opinion, the most important thing to figure out is the base of your build. So, if you're not going Thebes, then you have to figure out what else you like. So, say Thebes is too squishy. You could look at something like a Stone Gaia. If this passive is getting value... If you're against an Ares, or you're against a Bacchus who keeps looking to flop on you, or you're against a Fenrir who's looking to alt you, or, you know, Daji is going to be soon available. I, actually, I think she is available in ranked. It works against Daji, it works against all these uh, kind of big ultimate abilities that can put a support in trouble. You could build Stone of Gaia. It's cheaper than Thebes. It gives 100 more health. It'll give you amazing regen throughout the game, and it can obviously make you CC immune. I think... In situations where Stone of Gaia gets, like, the passive proc, then this item is insane to rush, because after you go Stone of Gaia, you could go straight into pretty much any item you want. You could still go the Jade Emperor's Crown, you could go Sovereignty, you could go, you know, Spirit Robe, you could go Shogun's Kasari, you could go any of the stuff, you could go Void Stone. And it would all transition really well, because you have so much health at the base of your build. 
Uh, after Gaia, you could look towards items like Urchin. You could look towards rushing items such as like Midgardian Mill if they have a lot of physical auto attackers. You could look at, you know, if a team has three magical uh, damage dealers, you could still look at Heart Ward Amulet. And something to keep in mind is every game, you want to build accordingly to what you're playing against. So if the standard team composition is three physical and two magical, so you have a warrior in solo, you have an assassin in the jungle, you have the hunter in the AD carry role, that's your three physical, and then you have the mage and the guardian. The guardian's damage normally isn't all that relevant. And because of that, uh, you normally want to build physical prot earlier. So maybe if you want to, or you don't want to double stack the auras, if you don't really care about the magical props from Thebes, maybe you can just go into a sovereignty. And then you could get something like an urchin, and then you still have that 15 physical prot aura, and then you get your urchin, and then you could get, you know, your shoguns, or you could get mid guardian, or you could get breastplate, or whatever you want. So, there's a lot of options out there. The most important part is just to be situationally aware. If I'm something like a Geb, right, and I'm starting the Blink Relic, or it works for Ymir too. If I'm starting Blink, then you could even look towards different items such as Relic Dagger, or you could look towards something like Oni Hunter's Garb, which are really weird items that pretty much never get built. But if you think about it, if I'm building Watcher's Gift, and then I'm going Lono's, and then I'm going my Boots, right? I could just go into a Gauntlet of Thebes, and now I could build a Selfish item. I could go something like a Breastplate of Valor, or I could go a Hide in the Nemean Line. Let's do Hide in the Nemean Line. Say I'm Ymir, and I want to be super beefy. I want to be in their AD carry's face. We'll go Hide of the Nemean Line after Thebes. Well, right here, I could just go Ani Hunter's Garb, which sounds really weird, and it's probably not the best item. But if I'm Blink Freezing people, normally the worst thing about Geb and Ymir and these type of gods that are immobile and rely on Blink to engage, you're blinking into their entire team in the middle of their entire team, and you're hoping that your team can wipe the enemy carries before you die because you're in the middle of everything. But if you have Ani Hunter's Garb and you blink and you CC them, and then you're getting 15% damage mitigation for 5 seconds, it doesn't really punish you much for being in the middle of them. It's kind of like a budget spirit robe, but it's a lot cheaper. It's 600 gold cheaper. It gives you the same crowd control reduction. It actually gives you more magical procs, and it gives you the passive, but you control the passive if you just choose when you're dealing damage to people. So... You have all these weird options that you can look towards. If you're something like an Ares, maybe instead you want to go the standard Watchers Lonos, and then you want to go uh, whatever boots. Again, we're just going to use Travelers because they're simple. You could look into going uh, aggressive ore items, right? You could go... Where the hell is the helm? You could go Jade Emperor's Crown, and then you could get something like a Void Stone, wherever that tree is. And then you could go Void Stone, and then now you're in a spot where... You have a lot of damage, maybe you do want to get something selfish. You could go an Urchin, you could go a Magi's Blessing, you could go a Stone of Gaia, you could go Thebes, so on and so forth. You have a lot of options. The most important thing is setting yourself up throughout the game so that you can counter build the enemy team. So you normally want to find that one item. As I showed in the item permutations thing, if you guys uh, didn't skip the little timestamp or whatever, uh, Magi's Blessing showed up a lot. You could even think about going Magi's after Boots. In my opinion, this is where you kind of have to take the numbers for, not for face value, I guess, would be the better way to say it. Because this passive gets poked off of you very easily, and items like Spirit Robe are normally favored on tanky targets, because you're always in the front line. If you're playing further back to conserve your Magi's passive, you're not really putting as much pressure out on the map and you're not really getting as much value out of your aggressive playstyle, potentially. So, you can have stuff like Magi's, you can go Thebes, you can go Urchin. Other good rushes that I think are pretty undervalued are uh, stuff like freaking Midgardian Mill. The reason I think this is undervalued is because if you just sit in front of an ADC, this proc can actually get them killed. The 30% movement slow is pretty insane. And if you're proccing this on an ADC and then you just dive them, they potentially have to bead just this proc. I've seen it happen in a lot of competitive games. Back in Season 2, Midgardian Mail was pretty much auto build on every tanky roll, and you would see that happen a lot. And Midgardian has been nerfed a good bit since then, but it's still a good item, and the passive is very good. There's still other item rushes that aren't really the best, but you can still get away with them. Stuff like Spirit Robe, or Breastplate of Valor, or going the good old Jigs build from Season 3. You could still go Wingblade, like... 
If you're against a nemesis, this is what I mean by setting yourself up. You have to be situationally aware. Because if you're against a nemesis, well, you could just go boots one, right? Your standard build, but instead of finishing your boots, you could just go wing blade. And now all of a sudden, you're dealing with a nemesis super well because you have the wing blade proc. You have a ton of HP at the start of your build and crowd control reduction. And all of a sudden, this serves as a really good base and a really good start to your build. You're not going to be as fast as if you had boots, but now you have a lot of extra stats. And now you can go into other items such as, uh, you know, such as a Sav, such as the Jade Emperor's Count, all this other stuff. Because you have 300 HP off of the bat from the wing blade, and you can transition in the rest of your build. So, really, the whole build meta is about recognizing what you're against and looking at all of your options in my opinion i think the cloak build is complete trash i like kind of hate it even if by the numbers it's the best effective health i think that passives are able to completely counter enemy teams and what they're trying to do and i think that to basically put yourself in a situation where you're just spamming the cloak tree like this and you're kind of ignoring other item passives i feel that it serves as kind of a crutch, and I don't think that it's the best way to build, and that game to game, it's not the optimal build. The thing is, this build will never be bad, because selfishly, you have a lot of prop, but in my opinion, I think there's better ways to go about it, and hopefully I shared some insight with that, and showed you guys kind of my thought process and what I think about builds. I know this was a long video, but it's kind of like a theory video, and kind of the way I see the support role, so... There's really no simple answer I can give you guys. I can't give you just a straight build. You should do this every game. So hopefully you guys got a good bit of information out of it. Hopefully you learned a lot and hopefully it helped. If you guys like the video, please subscribe and like it and all that good stuff. You can follow me on Twitch and Twitter if you want to know when I'm streaming or when other videos are coming out. And other than that, that's it, guys. I appreciate you for watching and hope everyone has a good day. Peace out.